For a long time now, teams have been an important and prevalent part of the Sonic franchise, pairing both heroes or villains together for pivotal missions that change the course of the world. We've even had games revolving around the idea of using teams as a mechanic. And while there are teams that many of us know by now, such as the Chaotix, there are still some that people aren't aware of. Today we will be breaking down everything you need to know about the newly formed team, the Diamond Cutters. Now, to fully understand who this new team is, we need to go back several years, because the Diamond Cutters had actually existed before. The original Diamond Cutters came to rise during the height of Eggman's empire during the events of Sonic Forces. This anti-Eggman mercenary group would take on missions to fight against the occupation of Eggman's badniks. The team was composed of Smithy, Clairvoyance, Slinger, Mimic, and Whisper. But they were all of them deceived. During the early stages of the Eggman War, Mimic had calculated that Eggman would in fact control 99% of the planet within a few months. With Sonic missing and presumed dead by many at this point in time, things were looking rather bleak for those who resisted Eggman. Not wanting to play for the losing team, Mimic had gone behind his team's back and forged an agreement with Eggman. This would pardon him of all past crimes in exchange for the death of his allies. With the stage set, Mimic had convinced his teammates to attack a specific egg base, which he stated would cause a major blackout for Eggman's forces along the coastline. This would be too big of a win for the Diamond Cutters to pass up. Arriving at the base, the Diamond Cutters grew worried as there was no security, and Claire was unable to use her psychic powers to help, like something was blocking them. While Whisper waited outside, the others moved further into Eggman's base, eventually stumbling upon a whole army of Shadow Androids in containment. The doors seal in on the team as Mimic slips out, and while the Diamond Cutters put up a good fight, they are eventually overwhelmed and killed by the Shadow androids. Knowing that Whisper wasn't there for the trap, Mimic leaves the base, taking the form of his former ally Slinger, in hopes to draw her out. She doesn't fall for this, but since this day, Mimic has been hunting her down. That is the tragic past of the Diamond Cutters, and this tragic tale of betrayal was told by Whisper to her friend Tangle. While listening to the story, Tangle became enamored with the Diamond Cutters and the bond of friendship that they shared, but she also felt a deep pain for her friend Whisper and the loss that she has endured. Ever since this moment, their bond has only grown stronger. Now follow me as we jump ahead to the Urban Warfare arc, where Lanolin suggests to Jewel that they create a rapid response team in order to stop threats before before any serious damage is done. While in the past the restoration has provided humanitarian aid and rebuilt what was damaged during the Eggman War and post-war events, they haven't had any force to prevent harm in the first place, mostly relying on Sonic to get things done. Lanolin explains that this will be an all-volunteer squad composed of herself, Whisper, and Tangle. With word about Eggman's new base going around, this new squad wanted Sonic's expertise to help lead them in and find a way to bring Eggman Eggman's base down. Without hesitation, Sonic is down to lend his help to this squad and asks if they have a team name. Tangle instantly votes to call themselves the Diamond Cutters. Lanolin seems down for the name as well, but Whisper is very visibly having a negative reaction to this. For Whisper, the past has been a hard thing for her to move on from. We see evidence of this time and time again throughout the comics. During the Metal Virus arc, Whisper was ready to kill Dr. Eggman for the lives and friends he took from her. She went below when she lost her best friend Tangle to the infection and can't seem to shake the guilt she has about her friends and old team. Because of this, she has tried to distance herself from others as much as she can, and now being on a team with the same name as her old team has clearly caused some anger and pain that Tangle wasn't trying to bring upon her friend. Lanolin, however, seems pretty excited to be working with THE Sonic the Hedgehog. She lets Sonic know that a while ago, Sonic had saved her town Riverside from a bad Nick invasion. It it was because of this event that she wanted to join up with the Restoration. If we go all the way back to Sonic Issue 2 which came out in 2018, it's really cool because while it's a very small role, we can see that while Sonic was protecting Riverside, Lanolin does make a brief appearance. She also warns Sonic and Amy that more badniks were arriving after Sonic had taken down the Death Crab. We finally get to see this new team in action as they arrive at the outskirts of Egg Imperial City, and it's interesting as you see a very tactical 
side when it comes to Whisper and Lanolin, who hang back and scout Eggman's base out. However, the high energy and spontaneity of Sonic and Tangle lead the two to rushing in to fight Eggman's forces. This really upsets Lanolin and Whisper because even with all the talent between the two of them, Lanolin points out that you can't beat the odds forever, and Whisper agrees in her head, stating that she knows this better than anyone. The team manages to handle the bad nicks despite the sloppy start, but it appears that this team is going to have to work out some kinks if they truly want to be effective. Tangle notices that Whisper is not happy with her at all and asks if the two need to talk about something, and Whisper just gives her a cold no. Lanolin starts to come into her own role as the leader of this group here. We see her assessing the situation and dishing out commands to Whisper in order to make use of her Wisp allies. This role comes pretty naturally to her, and I think that between the three of them, Lanolin fits the bill the best to be in charge of the new Diamond Cutters. The team finds out that somehow Eggman's new city is repairing itself. Sonic informs them that Bell had said that there were underground tunnels that connect all over the city. With that information, Lanolin sends her team out. As the team explores the underground network, they encounter bad nicks which they make swift work of. Traversing the underground, the team eventually encounters an area strip mined of all resources, and it's at this point that Lanolin makes the call to pull out and gather reinforcements so that they can storm the base. Sonic counters that this team here and now can do it. Tangle thinks both ideas sound good, and Whisper volunteers to stay behind and scout while the others fall back for reinforcements. However, Tangle isn't having any of this lone wolf attitude of Whisper. The diamond cutters at this point are very dysfunctional, wanting to do things their own way and not work as a unit. All of the sudden, a portal device boots up in front of our heroes and starts going after them. Speeding away, they're led into an ambush. Sonic manages to speed out of the ambush and away from the portal, but a zoomer hits Sonic's hand, sending the diamond cutters through the portal. This sends the three of them to a parallel world of sorts where they can hear and see people but can't interact with them. Tangle gets furious and feels useless, while Lanolin feels hopeless. Tangle looks to her for leadership, but Lanolin says she doesn't know if she's actually cut out for this position, telling Tangle that she only formed the team out of desperation. Back when her town was attacked, she felt so helpless and didn't want anyone to feel that way again. But now looking on how her first mission is going, she can't help but blame herself for the tough spot they are in. Tangle takes a moment to sit next to Lanolin and tell her that she has a team with her now and that this is a learning experience. I really like Tangle on this team. She brings out a positive vibe that's matched only by Sonic and we can see how much her team needed it. Lanolin asks how she can be sure and Tangle says it's because they are diamond cutters. This sets off a confrontation that Whisper wanted to get off her chest for a while now. She asks Tangle why. Why choose the name of her squad who had been killed? Lanolin clearly had no idea about this and Tangle realizes that she might have made a mistake and hurt her friend deeply. Whisper lets Lanolin know that her team was betrayed and destroyed. Tangle apologizes and lets Whisper know that she chose the name because her old teammates seemed cool and competent and that she wanted that for them. She didn't want her friendship with Whisper to drift apart again. Tangle is breaking out in tears at this point, but it gets Whisper thinking about how often her friends have been there for her recently. They all care deeply about her. Tangle continues to apologize and Lanolin says that they can change the team name, but Whisper holds out her hand and says that her old teammates were there for one another and here for her now. And despite how much she has tried to distance herself, everyone has been there to support her. Lanolin tries to be understanding of Whisper, saying that it would be hard to trust anyone after being betrayed. And here we get a huge character moment for Whisper, as she says only one person betrayed her and she won't let his fear poison her anymore. Whisper apologizes for being a bad friend and teammate. I think that this is a really big moment for Whisper going into the future. Ever since her first appearance in the comics, she has let fear of the past control her, and I really believe that she has grown to a point where that will no longer be the case. The three of them reconcile with each other and Whisper decides that they can stay as the Diamond Cutters, knowing that her past team would be honored that they are continuing the cause. Tangle squeezes them for a group hug, to the dismay of the other two. Trying to figure out how to get out of the sticky situation they're in, you can see how much more coherently the team is working, coming together in union and listening to each other's ideas. Here at this moment is the birth of the new Diamond Cutters. If you're interested in seeing this new team in action, check out the IDW Comics issues 57 through 61. I really like this new team and I'm looking forward to seeing more of them.
I think that the way that they each had to grow and overcome obstacles in order to become a team was really compelling. Lanolin is someone who is great as a natural leader, but was being held back by self-doubts of being good enough. Even the best leaders will fail, but you need to be able to pick yourself up and keep going, using past failures as a tool for learning. Whisper is a character who is by all means both design-wise and character-wise a lone wolf. She's afraid of becoming a pack again, so you force a character like her into one and she has to overcome her fears that she could lose those close to her. Opening herself up might lead to pain, but it's also the only way to heal. And Tangle is energetic even when the situation might be dangerous. While she might want to always go fast, her true power lies in taking things slow and being there to uplift her friends. I really liked what the writers put these characters through because once they overcame these struggles, I was really invested in what the team was capable of. Tough times make you strong and seeing this new team have to rise to the occasion was great. I'm curious what you all think of this new team. Do you like the new diamond cutters? Let me know in the comments. There has been a lot of news recently for Sonic shows, movies, and games, so make sure that you're subscribed in order to keep up to date with it all, and check out the video here for more. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, I wish you all the best, peace.